Hi, and thanks for picking up my free Z-Sphere rigs. Now, you're probably wondering how the heck do I actually use this, so let's actually get right into it. So what we have here is the base mesh and the actual rig. So these are two separate tools here, or sub-tools rather. And what you want to do is go on over to Z Plugin and Transpose Master. Okay, I've just docked it to the side here. And what we're going to do is go to the actual rig, just so we can use that, and I want to store the rig. Okay, so we're going to store that. Next, we're going to go to the base mesh, and I'm going to say Z-Sphere Rig to activate that, just so we can actually use the rig along with that when we pose this. So one thing you also want to do is, right now this is pretty low poly, but if you want to make that even more low poly, you can go down to Geometry, go down to Proxy Pose, and over here we have the Reduction Amount. So nothing will happen at the beginning because it's pretty low poly, but as you start dragging it up, you'll notice that it starts reducing the polygons. So we don't really need this now, so I'm going to switch that off. But later on that will come into use. So now we have all of that stuff. Okay, we stored the rig over here. Okay, and then we went over to this dude, making sure that we've got Z-Sphere rig. And if we want to keep groups on, we can do that, but we don't really need that. So now we're on the actual mesh. Go to T-Pose mesh. This will pose this, and you'll notice that we have this massive Z-Sphere in the way. So what do we need to do after that? After that, what we're going to do is say paste the rig. So pasting the rig will paste the actual rig. This will take about a few seconds. Don't panic, it's not freezing or anything. So it's just taking a second, and there we go. So now what we can do is we can use the move, scale, and rotate functions to actually move this. So you do not want to use draw. So whatever you do, don't draw on this rig. Whenever you post something, you don't want to add anything to it, whether it's the rig or the actual mesh itself. Either way, not a good idea. So let's go to move, and we can move this. And we can move this. And you'll notice nothing happens. That's because ZBrush just likes to make you jump through menus. So what you want to do is go down here to rigging. You want to say bind mesh. So binding that mesh will bind it. And now you can actually move it around. So I'm actually going to rotate instead. And we can click on this, for example, and rotate that. And click on this and rotate that. And of course, you can use symmetry. So I'll press X to get symmetry. And here it is. So I'm going to move that up or rotate that and rotate this. I'll press X again because I don't want symmetry on this one, so maybe he's doing this, like running for example. I'll press X again to get symmetry back, push that forward, X again, and you kind of get the point there. So here we have that. Next we can move, and if he's running forward, you'll notice that. And what I also like to do, by the way, is bring the size down here, because if I bring the size up, you'll notice that if I move this, it kind of moves a lot of that. So if you want to move one piece at a time, you can bring the size down. Now we're just moving this one piece here. So for example, if he's running the scapula, which is what this Z-Sphere represents, we'll probably move forward just a little bit. Okay, and this one here will move back just a little bit as well, because he's bringing this arm back. So that's kind of why I put these points here, just to represent the areas of rotation and movement of the actual skeleton. So for example, you've got the knee, the ankle, the pelvis, for example. So a few areas here. And yes, yeah, so you can just play around with that and move these. Obviously, you don't want to move random parts like this, it won't make any sense. So that's moving. We can also scale. In this case, we probably don't want to scale anything. So with scaling, you usually don't want to scale, but let's say this arm you want to kind of deform it a little bit. You can scale that, for example, and rotate. We definitely want to rotate things. So maybe this here, we can rotate this. Okay, just like that. And that doesn't really make any sense, but I'm just showing you kind of what you can do with this. With the legs, you usually don't want to rotate this. You can rotate it a little bit. So maybe here and there. Okay, and here, for example, is probably where you want to do most of the rotation. So something like that. And that is pretty much it for the movement. So we've got move, which will just move stuff, scale and rotate. And that's pretty much it. If you want more information on just how to move more and rotate and scale, you can just check out my free YouTube video on that. But that is pretty much it. So once you're done, again, make sure you're not drawing anything on this. So don't add any geometry to it because that will mess up any posing. Okay, so after you're done, after you're happy with what you've done, you can go to T-Pose Subtool. So the first one, T-Pose Mesh, is to bring it into the state. And by the way, it creates a separate subtool here. And after you're done with all that, you want to press T-Pose, and that will bring everything back. And here you go. So there it is. And no, it doesn't transpose the actual rig, because we brought this guy in, not the rig. Okay, so when we said T-Pose Mesh, what we did was we selected this dude, and we said T-Pose Mesh. So that's why I posed him only, and not the, other, the rig. Okay, so here we have this guy again, and now let's say that you have a little bit of a higher mesh, so I'm just going to divide this up a few times, so Control D, and I'm just going to delete hidden, or sorry, delete lower, so delete lower, that's under geometry, delete lower by the way. 
So now your mesh is pretty high. Like I said before, you can go to proxy pose and then just bring this up. So you've got a lower quality model as opposed to need, you know, needing to divide or subdivide that. So there it is. And the exact same thing, we'll just go to ZSphere rig. We'll store the rig, make sure you're actually on the rig. So store it. And then once you're on this guy, you can go to T pose mesh, we'll click on that. There you go, paste the rig. Okay, that'll take a second and there we go. So same process, the exact same thing. And again, you wanna go all the way down rigging, say bind mesh. Okay, and just like before, after you're done posing this guy with the proxy pose on, all you have to do is go back to T pose sub tool. This will bring everything back and you still have your proxy pose, but then you wanna switch it off. And now you've kept your high poly details with everything there. And of course, because it's high poly, usually you will have just a little bit of cleanup. And even with the low poly stuff, you will have a little bit of cleanup. So something that I would normally use with this would be the clay brush. So B, C, and L. So here it is here. Just to fill up some of these areas, probably bring down the intensity there, right? Just to fill up some of these areas. But again, you will have to kind of clean this stuff up as you're posing it. And that's just kind of how posing works. There's no way you're going to get one clean pose. You're just going to have to kind of work with that as it is. So yeah, that is pretty much it for using it with proxy pose. All right, so now we know all of that stuff. Let's just quickly get into some basic movements for the Z spheres. So yeah, on the actual Z sphere, I'm just calling it the rig for now. What you can do is you can move a bunch of these things. So again, move, right, we can do that. And if we wanted to, we can hold down Alt and click on one of these connectors, for example, and that will move the whole piece as opposed to just, you know, uh, a few of these. So holding down Alt and clicking and dragging will move this whole piece. Or here, for example, it'll move this whole thing here, which may or may not be what you want. Again, move or Alt. So again, moving with this, we can hold down Alt, click and drag. The same works for scale. So we can scale up this area here, for example, that will add thickness to this. And yeah, that's kind of about it. Like I said, if you just want a greater in-depth explanation, you can just go to my YouTube channel and check out my Z-Sphere tutorial. But that is pretty much it. And actually one thing I do want to note, let's say that you have a model here, for example, and let me just go to the cylinder 3D and let's say insert and the base mesh. Let's say that this dude is pretty like that. Okay. And let's say, for example, he's doing this we'll switch on symmetry. And let's say that his arm. Okay. For example, and now you want to use the mesh I've given you. So this rig, and you want to insert that here. So that's no problem. We can just go here and say insert. And we want to insert the rig. Now, if we get out of solo mode, you'll notice that the rig is a lot smaller. And when you go to you press W, you'll notice that it wants to move and not actually scale. So how do we scale this guy up? So let me go into transparency, which by the way, you can find under transform, transparency and ghost mode. So after that, you want to go down to deformation and you want to bring this up in size so we can size this up. So yeah, that looks about right. So around about there. If you wanted to, by the way, you could also rotate this okay, on the different axes. So just like that. So here size is obviously on all the axes and on rotate, we're just doing it on one axis. So here we'll just go to rotate and we'll just rotate that back up. And there you go. Now, obviously you have to fiddle with this a little bit more, but you can just move things into place. Just like that. And one last thing, just for the points, in case you're wondering where they go. This here is just the clavicle connection to the, from the clavicle to the scapula. Okay, this is the rotation, the ball joint of your arm. This is the clavicle. This is the jaw. That's the top of the head, obviously. This is the seventh cervical vertebra. And in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, this is just for people that actually know their anatomy. But if you don't know anything, don't worry too much about it. This is for the chest, so it should be around where the chest is. This is for the scapulae, so basically, like I explained before, the scapula does move a little bit, so that's what that is. This is for the 10th rib, roughly. This is for the pelvis. This is for the crotch, right? Just in case they kind of deform, you can move that. And over here, right, that there is for the joint of the pelvis, and we've got the knees, and lastly, the ankle and the foot. So they're basically placed where everything should be joining and rotating, so same thing for the hands, and for the elbow. So yeah, I've placed them roughly where they should be. And if you want, before you pose it, you can go into draw and add more points by clicking on these areas. So just like that. And again, do this before you actually hit the T-pose mesh. Remember when you were in the T-pose, you cannot add any geometry. 
So yeah, that is pretty much it. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, you can always email me and my details are, should be in the links down below. And yeah, that is pretty much it.